serving others, if you're truly a follower of Jesus, then you should conduct your life like Jesus did. Unbeknownst to many, Jesus didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. He was the consummate, the ultimate servant. And if we want to be like Jesus, we need to be servants too. Stay tuned for today's edition of Live Prayer. What problems are you dealing with in your life right now? Do you feel like giving up? Times are hard and you're not strong. Well, I know the answer for you. And it will lead to the truth. Don't look back to yesterday. Now there are answers. Welcome to Live Prayer. It's waiting there for you. Here's your host, Bill Kelly. You can make it through. There is a hope for you too. And welcome to Live Prayer. I'm Bill Keller. It's good to have you with me on this Tuesday the morning welcome to the program of course live prayer airs right here on my tv every monday through friday morning 7 to 7 30 i appreciate you tuning in today i really do of course i'm bill keller founder of liveprayer.com world's largest interactive christian website we reach a little over 2.4 million people every single day via the internet and i would encourage you if you haven't done so at all or even recently come visit us live prayer oneword.com, world's leading interactive Christian website. When you get to the website on the left menu bar, find the devotional sign-up link, click on it, put your email address in the little box, and you automatically start getting my free daily devotional I've written every morning for nearly 11 years now. Lots of incredible content on the website, audios of my appearances with Howard Stern, some videos of a uh, debate with Oprah Winfrey, just lots of incredible, unique audio video files, just a treasure trove of spiritual content, unique like you won't find anywhere else on the internet, much changes daily, so come visit us, liveprayer.com. It's good to have you with me on this Tuesday morning, pray you had a good start to your week yesterday, and let me just announce today as we will all the way up through uh, the beginning of our venture in New York, four weeks from this Sunday, four weeks from this Sunday, we will begin the 9-11 Christian Center at Ground Zero. We'll be holding our services every Sunday from September 5th through the end of the year at the New York Marriott. There's the address on the screen in their ballroom, and we will be there at 11 o'clock each and every Sunday. Of course, that's phase one of the 9-11 Christian Center at Ground Zero, Phase two kicks in January 1st when we move into our permanent facility where we'll literally have evangelistic meetings seven days a week, a special 9-11 memorial prayer room for the visitors to Ground Zero and anybody in the area who wants to come and just pray and meditate. It is going to be exciting. You know, I was on, I've been doing tons of uh, press interviews about this over the last few weeks. And people say, it sounds like you're taking on the Muslims. I said, no, we're actually just trying to go there to help save souls and bring people the truth. But you know what? The Muslims want to build a mosque at Ground Zero. I sat in my office one day. I said, well, you know, if they want to build a mosque at Ground Zero, fine, we'll build a Christian center. And I was reminded of that great story of Elijah when he challenged the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel on that wonderful day. He didn't go there with swords drawn. No, he simply stated you pray to your God, I'll pray to my God, and we'll see what God answers by fire. We'll see what God answers by fire. Well, that's all we're doing in New York. We're going there to take the gospel of Jesus Christ, that great city, plant right there at ground zero, bring the light of the gospel to that hallowed ground, and I already know what God's going to answer by fire. I really do. It's going to be exciting. We're going to see a revival spark in that city. I believe that. That's why I'm going there. I believe that revival is going to spark to the nation. I believe that. That's why I'm going there. And all I'm asking you to do is pray for us and help me any way you can because we are on a mission to bring this nation back to God and his truth. And I can think of no better place to, to, to launch that mission, to 
base that mission then at the hallowed ground right there in the financial district of New York at Ground Zero. That all starts on Sunday, September 5th, so please be praying, will you? Listen, we got a great topic today, servanthood. It's something that is rarely preached about, but it's something that we must talk about because if you truly want to be like Jesus, and that should be all... That should be the goal of every follower of Christ, to be more like our master. If you want to be like Jesus, you need to be a servant. So we're going to get into today's topic right after this first important commercial message. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with today's topic, servanthood on live prayer. I'm Bill Keller of Live Prayer, and I need your help. God has challenged me to open the 9-11 Christian Center at Ground Zero. This is a response to the new mosque that's being built within a block of the, where the World Trade Center towers used to stand. The Muslims are spending $110 million to build this mosque. God said to me to go put a Christian center within a block of ground zero, and that's what we're doing. We're going to open this center on Sunday, September 5th. I'll be flying personally to New York to hold those services every Sunday till the end of the year. And then starting January 1st, the center will literally be open 24-7. We'll hold evangelistic services there every day. We'll have a special 9-11 memorial prayer room so that those who come to New York City to visit that hallowed ground will have a place to come and meditate, pray, just spend some quiet time. This is a great undertaking. I can't do this alone. I need your help. To give a gift to the 9-11 Christian Center, you can go to liveprayer.com. Click on the donation link on the left menu bar. There you will find a secure server so you can make a gift with your major credit card or you can give via PayPal. Or if you want to just drop a check to us, that's great. You can send that to our headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida. That address is on your screen. In the information line of your check, just put 9-11 Christian Center your gift will go to this great undertaking. Islam is a 1,400-year-old lie from hell. The audacity of the Muslims to build a center in the shadows of the, where the trade center towers that their Muslim brothers knocked down, killing 3,000 innocent people, is a travesty. People are upset. I'm upset, but we're taking action. Sunday, September 5th. We will put our faith to the test as we open the 9-11 Christian Center at Ground Zero. I need your help. I need your prayers. I need your support. Thank you. God bless you. And welcome back to Live Prayer. Thank you so much for your prayers, for your sacrifice to help me. You keep me here each day with your financial gifts. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I try to explain to people that if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, you need to be like Jesus. And when you break down the life of Jesus, I think one of the central attributes of Christ that you rarely hear spoken about anymore was his servanthood. You know, in today's world, we're taught that if you're going to be somebody. You should have an entourage of people serving you. You should be waited on hand and foot. You know, when the, uh, the president goes somewhere, he's got his entourage and his security detail and all these people who serve him. When the CEO of a major corporation does his daily business. There's a whole staff of people there for one reason, to serve his needs. Your wealthy people will go home to their 30,000 square foot mansion and there's a whole cadre of servants. And probably the one thing that has sickened me more than anything else is these quote-unquote Christian superstars that everywhere they go, they've got an entourage of servants. 
people who fill their car up with gas, people who take care of their dry cleaning, people who do this, people who do that. And I know the argument, oh, I'm just too busy doing God's work to do any of that type of thing. In other words, they are not really served. They are being served hand and foot. They go home to their mansions, servants, drivers driving them around, private planes being flown by their pilots. They are served, not serving. Now, some people said, well, Jesus had his disciples. Yes, he did. And I'm sure his disciples, out of their love for Christ, probably took care of different things. But I see his disciples being discipled, being taught how to serve, and serving. Jesus didn't come to this earth to be waited on hand and foot like the ruler of some small nation. No. Jesus came to this earth to serve others. Now, I know servanthood isn't a very popular topic. You know, in the year 2010, you want to be successful? It depends on how many servants you have, how many people work for you, how many people are taking care of your, your minuscule needs every day. But is that how Jesus lived? I don't think so. Matter of fact, I know it wasn't. When you read the gospel accounts of the life of Jesus, what do you read about? Jesus serving others. And my friend, I'm here to tell you today that if you want to be a true follower of Jesus, if you want to be like the master, you first need to learn how to be a servant. You need to learn how to Serve others. You know, there's a great passage of Scripture that I've always loved. And I think it should be tacked on the front door of every TV preacher in this country. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Haven't heard too many of those sermons lately, have you? That's not a real good fundraising message, is it? But that's what the Bible says. Jesus said at one point, he says, you know, those people, they're getting their rewards now. And I don't doubt the salvation of some of these high-profile people. Wouldn't do that for a second. But I don't have to be very intelligent to believe if the Bible's true, and I believe it is, that many of these people are getting their rewards now. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. I want you to meditate on that passage of Scripture today. I'm telling you something. I have found over 20 years of ministry that the more I served, the more I gave of myself, the more at peace I was, the more joy I felt, the more in touch with Christ I really felt. 